and uh, he written six books 20 book chapter one patent uh, and has published more than 135 peer reviewed journals and more than have 205 uh, 200, 2500 citation he has carried out more than 12 r&d projects funded by national and international agencies as pi and co pi i request professor pratish shukla sir to begin the lecture professor pratish shukla sir good morning to all and i'm very happy to uh, see all together in this form of uh, seminar and uh, these days it is very successful because uh, of these lockdown and to avoid this particular pandemic people are using this type of uh, seminars and webinars so uh, i'm very thankful to dr govind and all the administrators including the vice chancellor of sage university for inviting me for this particular lecture and uh, as i told you that uh, the main concern which i am talking about is that bio inoculant but uh, i spoke to govind a few days back that uh, we want to also process towards the how these bio inoculant uh, can be commercialized means what type of entrepreneurship opportunities are there so as i am also uh, the coordinator for a international union project that is a eu project of entrepreneurship so i am also uh, giving some thought about it so i think i should start uh, the lecture because not wasting much time on it so first of all i will just are you able to see my presentation yes yes sir sure sir, you... sir kindly able to see the presentation yes sir kindly f5 sir yes sir yes. are you able to see yes sir sure sir, sure, sir. Yes, sir. okay okay so uh, now if you see the lecture is on binoculant for agricultural uh, sustainability biotechnological innovations and entrepreneurship opportunities if you see there is a logo of infendia uh, which is uh, focusing on female entrepreneurship and if you see this particular aspect has lot of potential and uh, i think uh, with small hello are you able to see yes sir yes sir sure sir okay so the particular type of uh, bioinoculant what i am just focusing today is that the aspects of novelty like the first is how to improve the formulation of bioinoculant because everybody knows that uh, bioinoculant can be used in agriculture but what are the techniques how they can be improved the second aspect is bioinoculant capability enhancement through metabolomics and systems biology approaches this is also very very important aspect that how these type of new approaches can be used for this particular bioinoculant improvement the third important is that whether bioinoculant can be used only for the crop enhancement no you have other options also like bioremediation as also disease control like disease uh, these are the innovative perspectives coming to the first one if you see this is the techniques uh, for improving the binoculant if you see there are various type of binoculant already in uh, the market and if you see there are some studies which are also important to be conducted with the help of phytostimulation so which i have listed here and there are studies by the remu et al 2017 they have used uh, some plant growth promoting microbial strain of azospirillum rhizobium bacillus and which are already enlisted as a good bioinoculant and then the second aspect is the phytostimulation this is also very very important that how you try to see the benefit from plant so you have to do the phytostimulation there are some studies of using it as a biological control agents you can see the tang et al study which is very recent one which they have used is as a uh, particular biological control agent now if you see this picture i think hope all of you are able to see that okay so uh, this particular picture tells you this is the several traits shown as pcpr which are used as a bioinoculant if you see here there are two types of methods here one is indirect 
one is a direct method in indirect method you try to see the ISS uh, response which prevents the phytopathogens and this is a very very good important aspect which we have just uh, noted down that this becomes a very important aspect of bioinoculant which has not been studied in detail now the formulation uh, uh, has to be done properly because there are so many aspects of formulations which uh, uh, a technical person only can tell you but important thing is that the formulations should have the cell protectant with desired microorganisms so if they can uh, have adverse conditions they can survive this is a very recent studies by bhattacharya and if you see there are different type of other formulations and also formulations which are discussing in this lecture are liquid solid metabolite polymeric coming to the solid formulations if you see we need to have a beneficial strain mixed with the solid carrier and if you see, uh, we can have used the granules here. And the main uh, beneficial effect of using charcoal is also there. And second is the liquid formulations. Here, the liquid formulation, you can use the microbial preparations and also the species of Azorospelum, Pseudomonas, Bacillus, Penicillium, they can be used. Metabolite, this is very challenging. And uh, many people still, they are working and it also has a very good potential for fighting against phytopathogens. So if you see the strains which are mesorhizobium, rhizobium, pseudomonas, trichoderma, which are used for this type of formulations. Then go to the polymeric formulation. Polymeric formulation mainly contains alginate beads, which you can also do that. And there are micro and macro type of beads. And this increases the stability of mushroom cultivations. Now, this is a very important table uh, and it gives you a snapshot of everything. I think you can go through this, that this is a microbe, this is the plant which uh, they are using uh, and the formulation, which type of formulation they have used, what technique they have used. If you see, the techniques are different and some techniques are very, very common, like cross-linking you can find in all these things. So, the success of the technique and formulation is the success of pyanoculant. So you must know about the bioinoculant can not be on single phase or single type of technique. You have to do the innovations in that. Going to the second table to uh, just uh, recapitulate everything is that techniques for, uh, if you see, uh, encapsulation, what type of techniques you can use for encapsulation is uh, you can use the uh, techniques of spray drying, extrusions, molecular intrusion, inclusions, interfacial polymerization, conservations. If you see the details are given fully in these research papers which are listed here and also this part documented properly as a success story and though there is a disadvantage also which we have listed here and uh, because everything which is having advantage they have some disadvantage also so you have to see the disadvantage also but the thing is that how much success you can do, how much processing time is there, everything is written here. So based on your choice, based on your material, based on your expertise, based on your whatever you want to do, you can do this, uh, choose these techniques. Now, what are the future uh, perspectives of such type of thing is that they are eco-friendly. You know that these bioformulation are eco-friendly. So you can use these techniques and also you can also try to see the growth promoting bacteria with some special type of conditions. So these are very, very important. We published recently with paper and I think Govind was also a co-author and Professor Anil Prakash is also in this meeting. Both uh, they contributed efficiently to uh, describe this particular aspect, which we have started working in our lab. If you see this paper is available with Govind, I think uh, I request him to share with the participants the whole paper. And it gives excellent uh, write-up because I cannot explain everything here and uh, all things are documented here and you can get through uh, this particular paper. Now, the second is binoculant capability enhancement. This is a very, very new area uh, through metabolomics and systems biology. Uh, when we started working on it with our scholars, people that uh, they have not uh, thought about it that whether systems biology can be used, but we found a very important aspect of that, that this type of aspect of systems biology is very, very important to collate the metabolic networks of microbes, which can be changed, which can be altered. 
and if you see recently uh, there is a role of computational modeling has been emerged as a very very important thing for binocular improvement now if you see what are the metabolic approaches the first is it involves the study and analysis of various metabolites of the cells it also gives the qualitative and quantitative measurement of metabolites wide uh, through uh, various type of biochemical networks and gene functions i think uh, all of you are able to hear it i just go in uh, everybody is able to hear and see the slides sure sir sure sir everybody is able to see yes sir yes sir yes sir okay okay thank you sure. now uh, before i go further in this detail you have to see that these techniques are quite documented and they are not a very important technique these days in the current practice so we have to promote these techniques we have to try to see that whether we can involve new technical normally you have seen that human tendency is that whatever is uh, final we proceed with that we don't uh, try to see innovate or we don't want to do new experiment even a phd student if he has got the objectives and he works on that objective if somebody says okay you can just innovate this objective it becomes little uh, difficult or uh, not easy for them so everything is not easy but you have to try for this so these metabolic approaches are based on the technical uh, aspects like the separation techniques you have to see the what type of metabolites are pre pre uh, present in that particular uh, bioinoculant uh, enhancing and also see that how these compounds volatile compounds are documented so you to you should have a data of capillary electrophoresis for ionic metabolites gc for primary metabolite and volatile compounds if you go further proteomic approaches these are very very important it gives a vital knowledge of protein level if you see uh, there are many techniques like people are using 2 2d dye and uh, gel electrophoresis these are techniques which gives you a links with metabolomics and transcriptomic if you get that particular data you understand what type of network it is covering then the third aspect is transcriptomics and genomics this approach can involve the study of rna deep sequencing and microarrays and if you see along with this transcriptomics genomics you have this uh, focusing on function structure evolution mapping editing everything so if you are able to perform these together i i think that you can definitely improve the capability of binocular together and i think multidisciplinary aspect is very very important these days if you see this picture i think this is uh, giving the snapshot whatever i have uh, told to you you can have one minute to look over it uh, because you see uh, if you see this is a data analysis i have made a this particular image to understand you and this is a very important aspect how this type of techniques can be used and if you see the integration of omics data systems biology transcriptomics genomics proteomics metabolomics combined together can give you clues for understanding what type of metabolites are important in this particular bioinoculant and this is a uh, systems biology approaches for beneficial efforts uh, effect of uh, bioinoculant now this is the list uh, which gives you a very brief insight of beneficial effects what type of approaches has been used it is not that we have only done it there are many new researchers who are doing it and we should read through these studies which i have documented here especially for the students who are doing phd in this area they should see these studies uh, like if you see the first uh, study use of pseudomonas fluorescence uh, as bioinoculant they used metabolomics uh, approaches and the study was done by martinez and fernandez in 2018 in the same way lakshman ourselves we used the this then uh, pseudomonas chlorophasis and so many other aspects are covered but they are using different techniques like metabolomics proteomics transcriptomics going to further uh, to further things that people they talk about crispr cas gene editing but i i don't think that much people they have tried it in the bioinoculant sector so uh, there are few aspects of uh, gene editing which you can use for uh, changing the genome of a microbe which can be used as a bioinoculant to enhance its capability also to understand how that particular spe specific protein can also act various computational tools like chopstop and ecris have been 
comp these are the very important techniques which are identifying the cleavage sequence with designed uh, RNA. Then one aspect is very important is constraint based modeling. If you see this constraint based modeling, I, I, I can tell you especially that uh, this constraint based modeling has been uh, not documented much and the people are still working to see how this can be used for uh, connecting the metabolic network. If you see uh, this CBM observed all the functions of metabolic networks, chemical physical constraint, a metabolic reconstruction also gives a network topology. So you can see what type of binocular network are doing what type of activities. Then you combine all together to understand this. This is not a one day uh, field that you can learn in one lecture or two lectures. You have to practice this. You have to see how uh, these type of networks are analyzed. Also, you have to see what type of uh, these activities can be used. And these are all new fields and research is also not much, much done in this aspect. Now, this is a snapshot to make you understand in a little uh, easier way is that this is the gene editing uh, techniques for enhancing the binocular capability. If you see here, you can find uh, CRISPR I and CRISPR Cas9 based genome editing has been done. And after experimentation validation, because all these studies you can do, but uh, experimentation, uh, experimental validation can give you the insight about how these things are going to happen in the field. Because if uh, binoculant has to be used in the field, finally the field trials are very important, which is not possible only doing in the lab work. So this is very important for the uh, researchers and uh, uh, colleagues like uh, uh, our professors which are doing all these activities in the lab like we are doing in the lab but we can do in the large scale or not that has to be uh, seen with particular aspect now if you go further uh, you see this table this table gives you a metabolic reconstruction and software tools with fpa this is a very good table i made it and i was uh, sometime you feel happy by uh, contributing and making a table which is having a lot of information so this is a table which is uh, really uh, very important for the people who are interested in this type of study. And I, I am sure that this type of study has not been documented much. So if you choose one study, any type of study, like if you use software of constraint-based reconstruction, you can use an interface with MATLAB and you have to collaborate with the mechanical engineer. You have to collaborate with the computer scientist. You cannot do alone everything. This is not a person, a personal thing which you can, uh, because I have to learn biology with, along with the use of computational sciences. So I will teach biology to my computer colleague and he will teach me the computer science. And then you can do that like MATLAB. And if you see mathematical toolbox, and if you see this uh, SNA uh, analysis also very important, then the reconstruction, if you want to reconstruct the metabolic uh, network of binoculin, you can use Brenda, Keg, Pedant, as uh, uh, Sabio, RK, Biosec. Uh, these softwares are available free, of course. And also, you can always approach me for uh, understanding this type of network understanding. And also, the softwares are available on academic license. Like if you are having academic ID, you, they will provide you the license. Now, what we conclude from these uh, this particular acts, uh, actions is that System biology, such as tools of CBM, OPNOC, FBA, are very, very importantly described for involvement of microbes. And this CRISPR-Cas and talents have been also very important to control the pathogen interaction with the host plant. And if you see, these especially uh, approaches, systems biology approaches, if they are transferred to the technical, uh, traditional agricultural tools, they can definitely give you very good results. These all approaches gives a better metabolic and communication pathway for the regulation of ecological sustainability. This is a very big word. Now, this is we also published in uh, last year in briefings in functional genomics. It is Oxford University Press. And this documents everything about uh, the, uh, how you use the metabolomics and systems biology. And I think this is one of the first uh, uh, paper, research review paper, which describes all these techniques and also in details of that. Anyone who wants to uh, take it, the paper, they can write to me or they can write to Govind. I will uh, try to provide this paper with, with a request that as per the publisher's uh, uh, 
conditions we cannot share it on public platform we cannot share it on uh, this uh, uh, research gate you, it is only for academic use so i will share this particular information with you now the third aspect and uh, the final aspect which i am covering not the final one but uh, innovative perspectives like how these can be used for bioremediation applications so if you see pgpr act as a, a very important tool and also very important to reduct uh, reduce the toxic pollutant pollutants which are very very important for uh, remediation purpose bioremediation so if you see in addition to the bioremediation process bioinoculant also improve the health of plants this is very very important if you see health of plant is directly related to health of that particular product so if the plant is not healthy if plant is diseased the production is lost so finally this is bioinoculant is also very important and plays a role in isr that is called induced systemic resistance many studies has been done now many uh, molecular and hormonal pathways are reported for defense stimulation and these uh, pathways are already listed so you have to focus on one pathway or two pathways and try to see how stimulation can be increased now the phyto hormonal effects and in induced uh, systemic resistance it involves uh, uh, phyto hormones like iaa salicylic acid ja also maps this is very very important microbe associated molecular patterns of useful microbes it is predictable by phytoreceptors and they also they are having hormonal signals that produced in the plant root this is a, a very very important thing and the molecular patterns are to be documented now many strains uh, uh, which are listed here are also uh, having this uh, induced systemic resistance i apologize that uh, the names of the species are not italics it should be italics now uh, uh, signaling pathways uh, this is a very very important that what type of signaling pathways uh, are encoded against these type of pathogens which is listed in this and if you see bioinoculant and pathogen and if you see the isr gene expression enhances the defense mechanism very very important thing and anybody interested in isr sector or capability enhancement they can use this particular aspect this is a, a table which gives you a phyto hormonal activity of bioinoculant also i have made uh, uh, these type of tables to make you understand on one slide to understand because if i start talking about all these aspect i think you will be confused so these tables will give you a insight of what type of work has been done and all these are uh, new studies like barnwall 2019 kaushal 2019 Hussain 2018, Lim and Kim 13 and 13. There are many other studies also, and the effect is also given. If you see, this is the effect effect of all these uh, parameters which are documented, and what type of plant species they have taken, and what bioinoculant they have used is also documented. Now, uh, how bioremediation uh, bioinoculant can also be uh, playing role for bioremediation? I have documented something. which you can see we have not still uh, done any experimental work and uh, we have not still tried but we are working on it to have something uh, by end of next year and uh, if you see there are some enzymatic activities and uh, uh, microbes can effectively remove the contaminants like tph uh, poly uh, polychlorinated biphenyls zinc lead organophosphates and the consortium of pgpr i am not telling about one uh, pgpr strain or something consortium can also give very good uh, uh, aspect of bioremediation and if you see i have written that these strains fastly metabolize the pollutants fastly metabolize the pollutant in eco friendly way and help in the plant growth promotion by enhancing the tolerance capability of pollutant now you can imagine that if you have a uh, bioinoculant with this capability you can also go for soil reclamation there are so many uh, soils which are not fertile they are not having good capacity they have pollutions so many things are there so if you develop a consortia like this which has this type of activity i i think it uh, will change the whole picture of the agriculture in the same way rhizosphere metabolic driven and genetically engineered approach this is a new approach i will just give you a brief insight that this approach is for enhancing microbial biomass via secondary metabolite which are discharged by the plant means we are not using anything which is uh, new we are trying to see the uh, this enhance the microbial biomass 
by using the secondary metabolites, which are already present in the plants. And if you see by using the genetic engineering method, you can also do this uh, uh, pollutes and degrading. Then also this type of engineered approach has shown much improvement and uh, the degradation of volatile compound is already reported. Now you see this is a snapshot, you can easily understand the picture. And you can see this is trichoderma induced resistance, this is non-induced resistance. And you can see how the enhanced defense has been created a very good story. Now these are some of the toxic contaminants which are uh, uh, to toxic contaminants which are uh, used for, Ms. Binoclant has been used for degradation of these toxic uh, contaminants. Now you can see that uh, Pseudomonas putida, Azorispirillum, Enterobacter, and the studies are also documented. So you can refer these papers and also see that how the binoclant role, any role you can define. It is not that you do everything. My purpose is that you can choose one aspect or two aspects, focus on that, try to develop a binoclant which is having a unique characteristics which is having a very global perspective. And if you are able to develop, I don't think that there is any limit. You can definitely market this particular product at a small unit that I will tell you in the next slide. Now, the future perspective of this is that this is a sustainable control of this particular uh, aspect. And you can have uh, this type of things for use for the biomedicine purpose. Now, things to consider. This is a very important slide because I am also uh, focusing on the aspects of uh, uh, this Emprendia project, as I told you earlier. And uh, I, I told Govind also to uh, tell the participants about this, that how this, uh, uh, because see, we... all teachers we are a capability for getting some type of job and we need to understand that whether we are able to commence any type of entrepreneurship or not so if you see you bio fertilizer manufacturer or bioinoculant manufacturer is a knowledge based and you have to have a competent team so you should hire a right team small team you can hire there is is also government regulations that is fco fertilizer control order so you have to follow that order then if you have a finished group, you have to see that you maintain the minimum population of the living binoclant, then packaging, which is very important. And if you see the license is given for three years. So if you are really having PhD in this area, uh, you need not to look for the job. You can defend, uh, definitely you can plan for a small unit in your university as well for binoclant. You can plan a small unit which can sell the binoclant uh, for various purposes. And also you can use this particular training or you can use this type of concept for further development. This is another uh, paper which we published is that ISR based on ISR. This also I will share with Govind. Yes, and uh, this is, uh, this is uh, my lab. And uh, if you see Twinkle is working on Bionocland. Other aspects also we are working on uh, probiotics, algal biopigments, uh, computational vaccine. This is very, very important. These we are working in collaboration then prebiotics and metabolic engineering, including bioremediation, which I have listed, then uh, microbial bioremediation of pesticides, then enzyme technology. These are some trainee students and postdocs, which are, these are few students who have done their MSc from our lab. And these are some past students. Uh, Dr. Sanjeev Gupta is alumni of uh, uh, Barkatullah University. He started his training. He was trained by Professor Anil Prakash, who is also uh, in this seminar as a speaker eminent speaker, he trained him and then he joined IPCA laboratory. He did a very good study in metabolic engineering along with other aspects. Then uh, these are other students which have completed PhD under me. Most of the work which I have learned is uh, joint learning with my students as well as self-learning. This is our laboratory web page. Anybody can go through that. Uh, this is uh, Enzyme Technology and Protein Bioinformatics Laboratory. So opportunities, research area, publication, other things you can see that. This is a group picture of all our uh, lab scholars, PhD students. And thank you very much. I have made a deal. So I think thank you very much, Govin, for inviting me. Thank you all for listening uh, quietly. <laughs> thank you very much. Should I stop it now? Yes, sir.
so my request to all the participants which uh, have any question so write the chat box and dr lavanya convey your message to professor pratish shukla sir all the participants are requested to write a question to chat box i am i'm seeing lot of messages go with yes sir yes sir sure sir yeah they are all thanking but yes, if sir. they have any questions sir uh, one question is the phytoplankton hormonal activities where, what is the is phyto hormonal phyto hormon phyto hormonal activities ke bare mein sir unhone pucha hai Uh, any and one more question from dr abhishek is coming actually the questions are been pumping pumped up yes, so yes, sir. sir i think sir minimum number of microbial cells to make bio fertilizer so many questions are there and yes, yes, uh, i i will just take one by one okay yes, sir. so yes, sir. if you see this is uh, one very important question uh, that uh, mm, uh, what type of bioclant can be used that what type of bioclant can be used or what type of formulation is required uh, I, since i have started uh, doing these all innovations in bioclant so oh, i am not sure that whether in the field uh, trials it will be successful but if you do these innovation first do in the lab trial and then you can do uh, these activities in the field trial so if you are able to see that how these type of things are Uh, successful or not you have to collaborate with some iri institute or you see the field trial institute where the experts of uh, the field trial are available and one more question from nilima is there uh, use of technology for the cyanobacteria of systems well yes definitely if you see if you uh, see that uh, uh, my research page or research lab page or lab group page you can find uh, this cyanobacteria how we are using cyanobacterial uh, systems biology and uh, we we can use it but i cannot uh, define everything here because of restriction of time but definitely you can uh, contact me anytime govind can give the email id uh, to all the participants they can connect to me through the email as well one more question is uh, about the uh, more about system biology one question is that so i think systems biology is uh, uh, not can be delivered in one uh, lecture or two lectures i told you in the beginning this field of computational biology requires practice we are all biologists we are always afraid with mathematics we are afraid with computers we are afraid with calculations so i i don't think that uh, we are able to learn in one day or two day so you can be continuous in touch with the papers read research papers read various type of aspects and then you try to understand first then try to practice it once you are able to practice i i think you can resolve most of the queries and other way uh, i am always available for your help govin there are so many questions so you can uh, make a word yes, file sir, of sir. all the questions and i will provide the yes, response sir. okay sir sir uh, we are blessed with professor anil prakash sir and uh, professor hb singh sir also present in this uh, uh, leading talk so any convey message to anil prakash sir aap kuch puchna chahte hain sir very nice lecture given by the सर प्रोफेसर एच बी सिंह सर आप सर कुछ नमस्कार सर नमस्कार 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 सर साहब आई वांट टू कांग्रेचुलेट बढ़िया है बहुत बढ़िया आई वांट टू कांग्रेचुलेट यू फॉर अ 
outstanding lecture and wonderful loaded with the new information thank you sir thank you right i will invite you for a book chapter very soon i think you will not decline <laughs> okay sir <laughs> okay yeah, but what uh, is uh, one one person anupul is there your name yes. we will meet uh, together sometime maybe not uh, in in this type of uh, environment maybe sometime we will have a get together <laughs> yes happy to really meet you and govind also will organize i think not uh, uh, where we can meet physically because that <laughs> makes more interactive when the situation should be normal yes, no covid <laughs> sir at present yes sir sir kuch students wants your ppt presentation yeah i will i will send you to email okay. okay yes sir. okay yes sir yes sir bye so now uh, so now i would like thank you to honorable chancellor sir engineer sanjeev agrawal sir dr prashant jain sir our executive director ms shivani agrawal ms sachi agrawal and most interested director dr ashish datta sir for giving us an opportunity to organize this event my sincere acknowledge to all the our renowned speakers professor pritish shukla sir dr hb singh sir uh, dr anil prakash sir dr puni singh chauhan sir dr uh, navin kumar arora sir dr bhim pratap singh sir dr am deshmukh sir for the providing the consent in national sai summer school a very hearty word warm thanks to honorable delegates who blessed us with their presence and took our took out valuable time for your uh, busy schedule it must mention our deep sense to appreciate professor sudhir srivastava sir dr sandeep srivastava sir dharmen sir rahul sir aditi madam lavanya ma'am and all the team of sagians for enthusiastic support to organize such a great event our heartily thanks to our advisory members organizing committee members for guidance to organize this event i would also like to thank to my colleagues uh, to organize and to provide uh, help for uh, organize such a event i would also thank to all the honorable delegates who made themselves available and uh, have blessed us with their presence so now heartily congratulation to all the participation for active participation in this event now tomorrow we will meet again 4:30 pm for listening the uh, talk uh, of dr punish singh chauhan sir and uh, he was uh, he is currently working as a principal scientist in division of microbial technology okay so anyway thanks we will meet we will meet at 4:30 pm tomorrow and the meeting id and password will send you uh, their respective mail and phone number so thank you all for their presence thank you thank you very much yeah okay Thank you sir. Thank you sir. Thank you. Sir.